let's start with the with the first uh, speaker is Raimundo Jose Albert. He's a researcher from CONICET and Facultad de Ingeniería, UBA, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And he's going to present the talk about the model order selection for sum of complex exponentials. Welcome, Raimundo. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, my name is Raimundo. I'm from a PhD student <laughs> from uh, University of Buenos Aires. And I'm going to present the work model order selection for sum of complex exponential. Uh, this work uh, we we do uh, with Cecilia Galarza, also a researcher and professor from Faculty of Ingeniería, University of Buenos Aires, y, and uh, Centro de Simulación Computacional CONICET in, in Argentina. So when some in many problems of engineering such as in, when we work with signals in radars or spectrometry, we can model this, these signals as a sum of complex exponentials. And of course, when we have a noisy signal, uh, we want to recover uh, the, exponent, the exponentials or, or the amplitude. And to do, to do that, we, we have the spectral estimation method. However, uh, before estimating the, the, the parameters, we need to to say how is the the quantity, you know, how many thing, how many exponentials we have that is given by, by this parameter r, and this parameter is known as the model order of, of the sum. And in this talk, we are going to show some methods to how to estimate uh, the model order based on, on the samples of the noisy signal. To do that, uh, we have the traditional method like uh, Akaike or minimum description length. We know these parameters are uh, optimal when in the asymptotic case. However, when we have uh, short data records, uh, we uh, start to lose some performance when we estimate the model order. On the other hand, we can rely on the Kronecker theorem. The Kronecker theorem is the theorem that states a relation between the, the complex exponential and the associated handle matrix that are built from the sum of complex exponential. So if we have, we define the handle matrix from the sequence X as this matrix, and it has the property that the skewed diagonals are all constant. The other important uh, properties of this matrix that came from the Kronecker theorem is that the rank of the matrix, the matrix, is equal to the model order, to the model order, so the parameter R. So one way to estimate R is if it to be uh, to estimate the rank. And another important property is known as the shift invariant property. Where well, this property we can pose a generalized a value problem where the n value are the complex mode in the sum. So, however, when we start to work with noisy signals and we build the handle matrix from this noisy signal, we have the problem that the matrix is going to be full rank and it usually doesn't satisfy the, the shift invariant property. So a method, a first method, a first approach to estimate the, the rank of the matrix or of the model order is to truncate singular values by doing a singular value decomposition and setting a threshold where to estimate the, the model order we are going to take the number of singular values that are bigger than this uh, three whole T. Of course, how to choose this T is a very, very important problem. But in, when in this work in 2014, when the matrix, the noise matrix, so the, the matrix uh, associated to the noise parameter, had uh, independent identical distributed uh, elements, we 
uh, can choose a, a three hole that is that can be right in the form where kappa is a a parameter that depends in the matrix uh, dimension of course uh, when we have when we have handle matrix we don't have any more iid element so doing uh, uh, using this three hole we can lose some performance when we are going to estimate uh, the model order we are going to show later that that, that this happens on the other hand we have the, to use this shift invariant property from the noisy handle matrix uh, with some algebraic manipulation we can rewrite the seeing the shift invariant property in this way and we found two two rules two methods the estimation error rule that we don't call Esther, that uh, it estimates the model order by minimize uh, this function uh, that is based on the shift invariant property. And we have another method that uh, calls with space based automatic model order selection that we call SAMOS. And this is another optimization problem where we minimize this function where gamma are the singular values of this augmenting matrix so this all met these two methods are based on the shift invariant property that uh, when when we have noisy signals it can be suffered uh, when the the level of the noise is is, is high so we have uh, this problem where we use the shift invariant property, but it can be happen that it suffer when the noise is high. And we have the, the other problem when we use the, the free hole that we are not taking into account the structure of the handle matrix. So, uh, therefore, in our in this work, we propose to combine these two approaches to one problem. Uh, we choose to minimize the ester function but we add a restriction on the singular values of the handle matrix we say that this this quantity it has to be uh, less or equal than a parameter delta where delta is uh, a value between zero and one so with this restriction we are imposing a maximum value on the singular values that are associated with the noise through the space. And at the same time, we are penalizing a small order that selects the ester rule by itself. Now we need to choose uh, this delta. To choose this delta, we want, of course, to take in account the, the handle structure of the noisy model, the matrix. In this case, we use the, the weights inequality, and we have that the noise, the signal values that are associated with the noise with space are always uh, smaller or equal to the spectral norm of the Hankel matrix associated with the noise spectrum. So in order to estimate this spectral norm, we take uh, Monte Carlo simulations, where we, in each simulation, we take a, a random complex normal vector. We build the handle matrix a square. In this case, we are going to work with the square matrix. We, so we, we build the square matrix and we take and we uh, compute the maximum singular value and we normalize it with the sum of all singular value. With all the simulation, we take the mean of this value for different matrix dimension and by fitting the sample, we can find a first uh, function that depends on matrix dimension. So we can find, a, we can choose a delta that depends on, on, on the matrix dimension of, of the noise. So with this uh, parameter, we are not going to pass to the, 
to a result. Uh, what we do is to take uh, some example from other publishers' work uh, and then to, to compare the performance of these different methods. Uh, we run Monte Carlo simulations again and we compute, uh, we estimate the probability of correct order. That are the graphics that are here. And also, we show uh, for three signal to noise radio. 0 dB, 10 dB, and 25 dB, the uh, interpolate histogram of the orders that are uh, estimated by the different methods. In this for example, we have a uh, four complex, uh, four complex exponential. When we see the, the probability of, of the order detection, uh, the curve uh, that is blue and the yellow one are Esther and Samos, respectively. We know that we see that uh, when the signal to noise ratio is high, the, the two rules can recover uh, with probability one or the, the actual the true order. But when the signal to noise ratio decreased, we the, the performance we lose performance, and when this the signal to noise ratio is very small. We never can, we never could uh, recover the, the actual order. On the other hand, we have the, the this uh, three hole rule that using the, for the case of e, the elements, we have, we have a very good, uh, good result for uh, Low, low signal to ratio. I think we, Raimundo, have. Sorry. Welcome back. Oh. Now? Yep. We can hear you or we are. We can hear you. Oh, okay. So we, we have a, for a small signal to noise ratio, we have a, a good performance in the case of the three hole rule. But when we the, the signal to noise ratio uh, gets higher, we are losing performance. Uh, this can be seen here in Instagram where the rule is uh, estimating larger, larger uh, orders. And this could happen because we are not considering the handle structure of the, of the noise map. And finally, in our case, the, the curve uh, is green. We know we see that for a small signal to noise ratio, we have a good performance, uh, equal or better than the hard three hole rule. And when the noise gets uh, high, uh, lower, pardon, sorry, uh, we have uh, that our rule can recover the the performance of the methods that are based on the shifting bias property. So as another example from the same work, in this case, we had nine complex exponential. In this, the results are very similar. We have that Esther looks, uh, is the worst performance. We have the same problem with the three hole rule and our our method can recover the, the two in for the high, for the low signal to noise radio we have the in the best performance and uh, we can recover the, the true order when the noise is is, is lower as a third example uh, well this is a tricky example because uh, the the complex uh, exponential are located very near to each other in the complex plane so this can this uh, could happen that the model order rules when the when the noise is high can recover uh, a small order. This is what is happening at zero dB. But uh, when the signal to noise ratio gets higher, we can recover in all the cases the the, the actual order. And finally, the example four. This is not from Another work, we, this is our proposal, uh, where 
we have the same problem than before. The, the, com the complex exponentials are uh, closer to each other in the, in the complex plane, but these parameters are taken from measurements from uh, an ultra wideband system, from a polyamide cylinder with some uh, humidity. And uh, when we try to, to estimate the order, uh, look that uh, Esther and Samos suffer a lot. Uh, we have the same problem with the hard tree hole in the high, in the low, in the high uh, signal to noise radio regime. And this is happening that the, is, uh, the, the rule is estimating a larger order and our method outperforms the other methods, especially uh, between 5 dB and 30 dB. So as, as conclusion, uh, we have that if, uh, the, the rules that depend on a tree hole, if we don't take into account the uh, handle structure, we used to tend uh, to lose performance when we have a high signal to noise radio. On the other hand, rules that are based on the shift invariant property uh, lose performance when the signal to noise radio is low. And with our proposal, we can recover the best of the two methods in the case of low signal to noise radio and high signal to noise radio. And as a future work, uh, we need uh, maybe re, uh, to think another way to, to, to choose a restriction or how to choose uh, the, the parameter delta to impose a, a restriction that uh, fully uh, recover the, the handle structure. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Raimundo. Let's, let's give Raimundo a warm virtual applause. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any question in the audience, in the people in the chat? You could put the, your question in the chat or in the Q&A uh, part. We have a message from Pablo Tomaset. Uh, Diego Avila Pesantes, if you are here in this session, uh, they need you in track one. Looks like you are in. You are not in the correct correct section. Any questions? We have a couple of minutes for a short question. There's no questions in, in the in the audience. I, I I have a few questions. I am going to propose just one one question for you. You just mentioned about the delta. I think it's the key part of your uh, proposal is the, the, the parameter that you put in the in the in the optimization. But yeah. uh, can you explain me a lot about the, the the example three where you have a cluster or a cluster of, of events and this relation with a, a sampling event in 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 a real uh, world? Well, uh, yes, uh, in this uh, example uh, four. Uh, is a, a, a similar if situation. To, if, if you prefer to answer in, in Spanish, there's no problem. Okay. El ejemplo 3, donde están eh, muy juntas las la, la, la frecuencias, por decirlo de alguna forma, mm -hmm. eh, también es en el ejemplo 4. Mm -hmm. Y eh, en este ejemplo 4, eh, estos parámetros eh, se, usar, eh, se obtuvieron a partir de mediciones reales de donde uno medía eh, un cilindro de poliamida eh, en, 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 mediante sensores y tomando la, la señal del sensor y aplicando, bueno, en este caso eh, se midieron varias, en varios eh, lugares ¿no? para tener más mediciones eh, y a partir de se vio que eh, estas frecuencias, eh, si bien eh, se puede ver que no, no dependen de de la posición de la antena, sino que solo dependen de la geometría y del, y del material que está hecho el objeto que uno está midiendo. Entonces, si uno puede extraer estas eh, frecuencias, podría clasificar el objeto. 
El problema es que, como vimos, eh, las frecuencias estas están muy juntas entre sí. O sea, y, y dependen uh -huh. de otras cosas. Pero... Entonces, cuando uno va y ve estos ejemplos, como el ejemplo 3 o el ejemplo 4, eh, bueno, se ve que el, el, por lo menos este, los tres métodos anteriormente mencionados están teniendo problemas. Uh -huh. Y bueno, con este método, eh, bueno, pues, bueno, en este caso capaz no tanto, pero en este caso sí, en el ejemplo 4, eh, tenemos una mejor predicción del... del la cantidad de modos que uno está queriendo estimar. Bien. Obviamente, si sí, el, el delta es un parámetro clave, y bueno, hay que, como digo, hay que seguir trabajando en, en, en ahí, digamos. Totalmente. Hay trabajo por hacer. Eh, thanks very much, Raimundo. Sí.